Well, hello everyone, my name is Wigo, and welcome back again to yet another video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Pokemon ROM hack Pokemon Clover. And as you might know, this video falls perfectly in the same week as St. Patrick's Day with the Clover and all of that shenanigans. Pokemon Clover is a 4chan based Pokemon Fire Red ROM hack, which features a lot of new things like a brand new region called Foshan, as well as new Fakemon that puts other Pokemon games to shame. Other features include new characters, a new story, a complete original soundtrack and 386 new Pokemon. It also has a Wonder Trade feature, which I thought was very interesting, so I was like, Let's beat this game with only Wonder Trade Pokemon. As you might know, this is going to bring us at a disadvantage a lot of the times because Pokemon aren't going to obey us, they're going to fall asleep and all the stuff like that because they don't like us yet. The rules are pretty simple, no items in battle, I can only use Wonder Trade Pokemon in battle and I will be able to use HM Pokemon. Pokemon Clover is one of my favorite ROM hacks and if you haven't played it yet, I highly recommend it. I will leave a link in the description to where you can download the game. We start off our adventure by naming ourselves Zwigo, of course, but if you look at the names that you can choose for your rival, there is a pretty inappropriate name right there. But we're not going to pick that, we're going to name him Sub now because that's what you should do right now. Click that subscribe button down below and make sure you don't miss any of my new videos. As we try to leave town, we get greeted by this region's professor, which is Professor Stump. And as you can see, when the characters talk, they have this cool sprite that comes above the text box, which is just an amazing new feature. As he explains that we have to try and do some Pokedex project, he gives us our starter Pokemon. We can choose between Grass Hole, the grass type Pokemon, of course, Ejikasm, the water type Pokemon, and Arabom the fire type Pokemon. Yes, this game is pretty offensive, so if you get easily offended, I'm very sorry. It doesn't really matter which one we pick because we have to trade it away anyway, so I'm going to go for Grass Hole because that's the least controversial one. And then we of course have to do a rival battle. Even though that he doesn't have any fire type moves yet, he still manages to beat me, but that doesn't really matter. As we try to leave town, we meet up with our second rival in this game. Yes, this game has two rivals, Kexandra. She has the other starter, Ejaculate but that thing hasn't got a very good attacking stat so we easily beat her up. We then go back to Professor Stum to deliver the package and get ourselves some Pokedex and Pokeballs. We then go to Viridian Forest to level up my grass hole a little bit and then it evolved into an Analgy. As we try to leave the forest our rival comes up to us once again and he wants to battle us. We easily take care of his first Pokemon Nauseon which is a poison type with two bites. And last up is his starter Arabom which also dies in two single bites. As we reach the next city, it is time for our first wonder trade because here we can do wonder trades. Also, I did not explain this at the beginning of the video, but I can wonder trade 9 times in this entire video, which means that the first time is going to be before the first gym and then after I get another gym match, so every single gym match I get, I can do another wonder trade. So we say goodbye to Analgi and we get sent over a Smegma the Sem Drop as our new Pokemon, which right now is just a normal type. But since it's already level 17 and we don't have a single gym match yet, we're going to be in for a rough time. Here is his moveset and his stats, it's not really that amazing, but we can work with this. As we go into the museum, we have our first encounter with the evil team of this region, Team Karma. Their purpose is to destroy all of the memes, because that's what this game is all about. Memes. They hate people that enjoy memes and they want to kill all of the memes and delete them from the internet, which is not something that we cannot happen. But we can't even beat up the first grunt, which has an Armando, which is a fighting type, and our normal type really doesn't stand up to it. Not because we're too weak, but mostly because he doesn't really listen to us. Eventually we did beat up the first grunt but then we got taken out by the second grunt which had a donkey pee which is a poison type and sadly enough, our Smegma wasn't strong enough. So I decided to go to Brock's gym. And if you talk to the camper, he always says, you're light years away from facing Brock. And in this game, that's taken quite literally. You teleport to out of space on a meteorite and have to fight him on there, which is quite cool. But sadly enough, his ace Pokemon Chompest, which is a dark rock type, takes me out multiple times because my Smegma doesn't really listen to us. There isn't really a strategy to taking Brock down, so I just wait until I learn rollout. 
You just have to hit roll out once and then it will just keep on going. It doesn't matter if your Pokemon is traded or not, roll out would then always go on. Unless it misses, of course. But this is really a problem solving move. So after learning roll out, I decided to go back to the museum and leave Brock behind for a little bit. This time I easily beat them up without any problems. Even the Team Karma admin wasn't a hard fight. We easily took all of the Pokemon down with roll out. After driving off Team Karma, I went back to Brock. And I just started rollouting. His first Pokemon, Landshell, went down with just three rollouts, and then his Bulbacol came out, which I also took down with one single rollout. But then my rollout stopped, and Chompest came out. Luckily, though, after spamming rollout a few times, I managed to take him out with only four health remaining. This was a pretty hard first gym battle, not gonna lie. It was then time for me to do my second wonder trade. I traded in a square wrap and got myself a Macmona named Delete, who is a fighting ghost type, which is a great typing. In Mad Moon, I took myself the Horn Fossil and I also got myself the Raptor Claw, which is also another fossil Pokemon, but I won't be using these kinds of Pokemon in this game. At the end of the cave, we meet our second rival, Kexandra, once again to beat her up. Our first Pokemon is a Mei Mei, which Delete easily takes out with a single Karate Chop. Then Singlets came out, which apparently is a psychic type so I take it down with a karate chop and a lick. And last up was the evolved form of our starter Pokemon Hosechek which is now water poison type. We struggled a little bit but eventually we did take it down. Now we go to the second gym which is led by Tumblrita. And as the name suggests, yes she uses Tumblr quite a lot. Sadly enough she had a CJ whale which took down my entire team so I knew that I wasn't ready yet. So I decided to clear the Nugget Bridge first to get myself some XP. At the end of the bridge we have our first encounter with Kimmy. At this moment in time we don't know who she is yet, but she challenges us to a battle. But our Pokemon were pretty weak from the Nugget Bridge so we lost. After returning with a fully healed team I took her on once again. And this time I led with Smegma to set up some rollouts and take out our first two Pokemon with it. Last up was No Goat which has amazing high defense, so my rollout didn't take it out. Smegma went down and Delete had to finish it off with a karate chop. She wants to meet up with us later at her sports club and then heads off. So after beating her up and leveling up a little bit more, I decided to take on the gym again. I set up a rollout on her first Pokemon and took down her next two Pokemon with it as well. And last up was Caroline, which is a ground flying type. Kinda reminds me of Farfetch. So my send drop got taken out, so I had to switch in delete again. I went for Karate Chop, which was not very effective on it, and then we almost get taken out by a peck, but eventually we do take it down with a Comet Punch to win ourselves the second gym badge. So another gym badge, another wonder trade. We trade away a Mei Mei and we get a Titai back named Scryte who is a water fairy type which can come in handy. After leveling up a little bit more, my smegma finally evolved into a Semrust. Then at the top of the icy mountain there is a little cabin with a guy in it, who basically serves the same purpose as Bill, but in this ROM hack he's named Normal and he gives us the EXP share and not the SS ticket. We then take a little stop by the bike shop where we have to do a P contest. Yes, a P contest. The person who pees the furthest gets a free bike. And of course, because we're a 10 year old and we drank a lot of soda, we win this one. Easy free bike. I then decide to teach Rock Tomb to my delete, since TMs in these games have infinite uses just like Gen 5 and above. We then found a crashed UFO on top of a mountain, which was full of alien-like Pokemon. While I was taking on these alien-type Pokemon, my Tite evolved into an Octai. As we try to continue our journey, a big old pile of shit is blocking the way, so we have to take another route. As we reach the next town, which is led by the Electric-type gym leader, we have to put in a cheat code to get rid of the laser beams. He talks in some kind of weird computer language, which I'm not going to translate. His name is Guy and his first Pokemon is an Anonymous. But sadly enough, our team really isn't that well built around taking down electric types. And it also doesn't help that they don't obey us all the time. But eventually, we did pull through. We took down his first Pokemon Anonymous with a draining kiss because it's dark electric type. Next up was Picoton, so I switched into Smegma, which took it down with a few mud shots. Next up was Ribizap, which had Ice Beam, which is pretty annoying, but two mud shots took care of it as well. Last up was Mushock, 
so I tried to go for Mutt Shot, but my Smegma ignored orders and went for Rollout, which meant that we were taken down by two more Stomps. So I went to Delete and hit it with a Karate Chop, it didn't do that much damage, so I just decided to confuse it with Confuse Ray. After then hitting itself two times and me hitting it with two Karate Chops, it finally went down and we won ourselves the third Gym Badge. At the end of the battle he says, I can't keep talking in this computer language and starts talking normally, which is kind of funny. We then do a little meet up with Kimmy, who gives us the SS ticket. And you know, new gym badge, new wonder trade. This time I get the this with this name, which is actually a Praetor. Praetor? Praetor. Yeah, it's another water type. We easily find out that the ship is totally infested by Team Karma Grunts. And as we go to the front of the ship, our rival challenges us to another battle. His first Pokemon is his Nauseon, so I switch into Smegma to take it out with a single Mud Shot. Then one of the alien Pokemons, a Lamau, comes out, which has a super effective magical leave against my Smegma. After spamming Mud Shot, Slam, and Shockwave, we eventually do take it out. Next up is an UFO Real, which is a dark type, so I switch into Delete to take it out with two Karate Chops. And then the evolved form of his starter Pokemon, Iguala, comes out, which I also take down with a single Karate Chop because it's dark fire type. After that, Delete gets the opportunity to learn all of the elemental punches as well as Mac Punch, which can come in handy very well later on. Team Karma then catches us and decides to throw us in the ocean. We are stranded on another island where we have to meet another professor professor who lets us choose another starter Pokemon. We go for the Reptile one, Reptike, which is Dragon Fighting type, but sadly enough, we won't be able to use it. We do name it Follow Now to remind y'all to follow me on Twitter, link will be in the description, where I post a lot of stupid stuff. Hey, we then get the HM for cut from a captain in the house, and we capture ourselves a Flocona to teach it to. After then continuing through the routes, we have another encounter with our other rival, Kexandra, who starts off with a Flowery, which is poison dark type, which has no weakness because she has Levitate. I start off with my Prater, but I immediately switch into Delete to take it down with a few punches. Next up is Dubas, so I stay in and go for a Shadow Punch, which one shots it. Then a Memnons comes out, which I take out with two Mac Punches. Last up is our starter, Hose Jack, so I go for a Shockwave and two Mud Shots to win ourselves the battle. As we enter the cave, there is a guy who says, Surprise, Mother Who has a Pokemon that is named Mother And you probably guessed it already, this Pokemon is just made to trigger you. It just uses explosion and the battle is over. Later on we will encounter more of these things and they will all have very annoying moves. So yeah, not looking forward to that. In the cave my Prater evolved into a Prastish which has pretty good defensive and offensive stats. While in the cave I also found a water stone which evolves my Smegma. So I used it on him and I got myself a Semdomen. Next up is a town that is cursed by some skeletons, and as you try to leave it, there is a skeleton that scares you and doesn't let you leave. So as I'm trying to go to the graveyard, our rival stops us once again for another battle. He starts off with an a Lamau, which takes out my Prostish very easily, so I go into Delete to take it out with a Shadow Punch. Next up is a Deem Dao, which has Shadow Punch in the face as well. Next up is Armor White, which is the evolved throne from you for real, which is also dark type, so I punch it a few times and it's down and out. Next up is Iguala, so I switch into Scry to take it out with a single Muddy Water, and last up is Hazmate, who I easily take down with Simdomen's Nutshot. As we enter the tower, we see some skeletons standing around a jukebox playing some music. And then while traversing through the tower, we find some more skeletons, which, if they see us, send us back to the last floor that we've been on. So after avoiding skeletons for about an hour, I eventually reach the top floor, where an evil spirit is tormenting this place place and we have to save this old man from it. So we easily defeat the spirit and we drag the old man back to his house where he gives us a skeleton charm which scares away skeletons so now we can finally move on. While we roll into the next town, I enter a shop where there is a big picture of this man, one of the creators of Pokemon. Thank you for making my childhood and my adulthood amazing. We then go into the next gym which is grass type and filled with smoke where you have to traverse through. And the leader is, yeah you guessed it, Snoop Dogg. And this is the hardest 
fight in the entire game. And no, it's not because my team is mostly water based, I have already played through this rom hack a few years ago, and I remember that I had a lot of trouble in this gym back then as well. It is because of his ace Pokemon Marlizard, which has a move named Toke, which lowers his defense and special defense but ups his attack by two stages, ups his attack by two stages, and ups his speed by two stages as well, which is crazy. And this makes it one of the most OP Pokemon in this entire game. So after failing about 50 attempts, I decide to take on Memes Incorporations right now. One of the grunts tells us to get the card key from a man in the house next to the building, which we do. And then I got stuck for a moment, so I decided to take on the gym a few more times. Which as you may expect, didn't went as planned, so I had to grind up in the grass just a little bit more. Then after getting my entire team to around level 40, 50 ish, I decided to head back. And this time everything went pretty smoothly. Delete used Sky Uppercut on Van Dash to one shot it. Scryte kissed the Anaconda to take it down in one single hit as well. Then Ignut came out, so I switched into Semdemen, but he didn't obey me for two turns, so we got hit with a big Giga Drain. Eventually I snapped out and in Moody Water took it down. And then the big boy Marlizard came out. So I switched into Delete and went for Sky Uppercut, but sadly enough he didn't obey me every single time, so he went for Ice Punch and Fire Punch and Sky Uppercut and eventually my Delete went down. So I went into Smegma, hit it with a Muddy Water, but it was left at 1 HP and it used Toke, so next turn he outspeeded me and went for a Giga Drain to take me out. So I went into Scryde, he hit me with a Giga Drain which didn't take me out this time and a Muddy Water finished off the Marlizard. Last up was Mario Nettle, so I went for a Draining Kiss, but we got taken out by a Needle Arm. So Prostish had to finish it off with a Facade. And now we finally have acquired our fourth Gym Badge. So then eventually I found my way up to Memes Incorporated's highest floor, where we meet one of the admins of Team Karma, Lil Bro. He says that he doesn't have any Pokemon with him, so he just flees. So another Gym Badge, another Wonder Trade. I traded Follow Me and got myself a Waggle, which immediately immediately evolved into Fedorok, which is a very cool looking Pokemon. Then after taking on Memes Incorporation, we have to go ahead and challenge the 5th gym, which is led by Freddy Mercury from Queen, which is an amazing reference. He of course has Psychic type Pokemon, which my team really isn't that good against. And even though that we're quite over leveled, we still lose a lot of times because my Pokemon don't obey me all of the time. But eventually, after trying a few times, we did manage to defeat him. His first Pokemon was an Alamau, which we took down with two crunches. Next was Tripsius, which I took down with two earthquakes from Smegma. Next was Wifemin, so I switched into Delete to hit it with two shadow punches, but it wasn't enough and we got taken out. So I went to the Prostage, hit it with an Aqua Jet, and then we get taken out by a Psychic because she healed up. So Scryte finished it off with a Draining Kiss and a Muddy Water. Now Lossalith came out, which is Steel Psychic type, so I stayed in and hit it with two Water Spouts to take it out. Now last up was Gay, who took down my Scryte pretty easily. So I went to the Smegma and finished it off with two more Muddy Waters. And now we get ourselves the Queen Badge. And of course another Wonder Trade has to happen. And this time I get a Spurdo, which is honestly not that great of a Pokemon. I then get a Chantruth from the Fighting Dojo, which I named Drink Water to remind you to drink water in these difficult times and stay safe. We don't want you getting sick, so wash your hands. We then go to the sewer to open up a rusty door with a rusty key, which appears to be the Team Karma hideout. While in the hideout, my Waggle evolved into Face Eagle, his final form. Very cool looking Pokemon, fire flying type as well. But of course our rival has to interrupt us once again, so he starts off with this Alamau and I have my Waggle, but because we're pretty weak, we get taken out with a few Psychics. So I switched into Delete to take it down with two more Shadow Punches. Next was Lizogvor, so I went for his Sky Uppercut, but it wasn't enough, so he got taken out. So Scryde finished it off with a Muddy Water, and then Hazmate came out, who went for the Poison Jab, which was enough to take down my Scryde. So I switched into Smegma to finish off the Hazmate with an Earth Power. 
Douster then got taken out by two Muddy Waters, then Trigger Dawn came out, who I took down with a single Earth Power, and then his last Pokemon, Armor White, couldn't survive two Earth Powers either. Another easy rival fight. We then got stuck for three hours on a spinning puzzle, which was amazing, and finally reached Lil Bro. He starts off with a Birdhouse, who after hitting him twice, exploded. So next was Kaka Demon. <laughs> Those are the big piles of shit you see lying around. And Waggle really couldn't stand up to it, so he went down. So I went into Delete to hit it with a Sky Uppercut, just to find out that it was not very effective, and we almost got taken out, so I switched into Smegma to take it out with the Muddy Water. A Hone Raid then came out, who took down my Smegma with a single Leaf Blade, so I switched into Scrite to take it out with a Water Spout. Smellox then came out, so I went for a Psychic to take it out in one single hit. And last up was Chasumo, who also shares the same fate as Smellox. After the battle, Lil Bro starts crying and he tells me that he isn't even the top trainer and that he misses his big brother. Very sad story. After leveling up, my Spurdo evolved into a Speedo. Great. Not offensive at all. As we crossed into Mexico, there were five Mexicans right there who also wanted to cross the border but they ran away because they thought that I was a policeman. After finding all of them and bringing them over the border, they give us the poop flute so that we can wake up caca demons. We then came across another mother who took down my entire team. We then finally reached the next town where we have to fight our rival Kexandra once again. And this is also one of the hardest fights in the game, because I lost over 50 times easily, so I decided to take on the gym first, which is actually led by Kanye West, at least a dying version of Kanye West. Our first two attempts sadly ended in vain because of the caca demon, but third time's the charm, we go in again, and this time we manage to beat him. He starts off with a hazmate which easily gets one shot by a psychic from Scryd. Next up is Toxiraptor, so I switch in Smegma to take it out with a single Earth Power. Smoxilon then comes out, which is a pretty cool looking Pokemon. So I start off by hitting it with two Hydro Pumps, but then he heals it up. So a few Shock Waves and another Hydro Pump later, and he's down. Chris the King then comes out, so I hit it with an Earthquake and a Shock Wave, which easily takes it out. And next up is Kakademon, which manages to tank an Earth Power and then take out my Simdoman. So I switch back into my Scryte and finish it off with the muddy water. A ball of ball comes out and he takes down my scryde with a sludge bomb, so I go into my Prater to do some chip damage with waterfall and crunch, but it doesn't do enough damage and he also goes down, so delete has to finish it off. And this was Kanye's final Pokemon, so we get ourselves the thickest gym badge. Kanye is now slowly dying, so he tells us to call an ambulance, which we do right away. And then we go to the Poké Center to do our next Wonder Trade, and this time we get a Bone Gecko, which is the first evolution of Marley's art, so I am so happy with this. So now that we have our next gym badge, it's time to take on the rival again. She of course starts off with her Flowery, which is impossible to take down, because it has moves like Substitute, and also no weakness. So after hitting it with a lot of water spouts and muddy waters, my Scryde actually went down. So I switched in Smegma and took it down with a Hydro Pump. Tripius came out, so I went for an Earth Power which took it down in one single hit. Spaghettifant was next, so I went into Delete to hit it with two Ice Punches, but it wasn't enough, so we got taken out. I then went into Brackets and took it down with a Crunch. And next up was Hitmanana, which is Fighting Grass, so a single Trail Pack finished it off. Memeness was next, so I switched into Spurdo, but he couldn't really do anything, only one single play rough. So I switched in Smegma to finish it off with a Hydro Pump, and last up was Condoom, who couldn't withstand two Earth powers, so we won ourselves the next rival battle. After the battle, our cannabis evolved into a Mariguana. Also, don't do drugs, kids. While surfing on the water, we found a Mexican who was walking on water and his name was Jesus. Another very, very cool reference. We then find ourselves in a meeting from a bald guy who is telling some other people about other religions and how they're bad and I think I know what this is. And we can't let this meeting happen so we beat up all of the skinheads. The leader then tells us that he's the gym leader of this town and then we should take him on in his gym. To get access to him 
you first have to free all of the Jews in the basement. Oh man, this game. So we let all of them go, and then we go ahead and challenge him. His first Pokemon is a Kuklan. Oh my god. Get that thing out here with a waterfall. Next up is a Pyrolink, who actually has a pretty cool design. So I went for a water spout, but he was left with 1 HP. He then healed up, and two more serves took it down. Next up is Fauri Grace, so I switched back into Brackets because it's Water Grass type and went for a Drill Pack. Its defenses are pretty high, so I don't do much damage and eventually Brackets go down. I then went into Cannabis, went for a Toke and then tried to go for a Spore but we got taken out. I then thought that Delete could finish it off with a Sky Upper Cut but it was left with a few HP and then Delete went down. So Spurdo finished the job with a Sucker Punch. Next was Hiltrak, so I went into my Octopus, and one Surf was enough to take it out. Next was Earthswine, who is based on Ursaring, but a Surf didn't do enough damage and he took me down, so I went into Smegma to finish it off with an Earth Power. Last was Finasovan. I do not approve of this, this should not be in this game by the way. And this thing is Rock Fire, so a Hydro Pump easily took it down. After the battle, we get the TM4 Fire Blast in the next Gym Bash, and he also tells us that he's trying to accept other religions and that's the reason why he had a Flory Grace on his team. I then did another wonder trade to get a Moss Dog named Slaughter, which I honestly never used because it's not that good of a Pokemon. And then we finally find the team Karma ship where they threw us off in the beginning of the episode. On the ship we have our first admin fight against Leon. He starts off with a Toxiraptor who hits us with a Toxi Ravage and then we finish it off with a Waterfall. Next was Anaconda, so I switched in Scryde and kissed it to death. Batarex came out and I also kissed that thing to death. Next up was Lizogbar, so I stayed in and hit it with a Surf, which also one-shotted it. Then Pyrolink came out, which I kissed a few times in the cheek as well, and then a Surf finished it off. Last up was Kanonan, so I went for a Lactose shot, and then he took me down with a Flash Cannon. Luckily, I still had Smegma, so an Earth Power was enough to win us the battle. I then go ahead and grab the Leaf Stone to evolve my Marigoana into a Marlizard. After that, we do some more puzzles, until we eventually reach a Lil Bro. He starts off with his Sprucifix, who my Marley's Arts takes out with two flamethrowers. Next up is Baloofang, who is clearly a ghost type, so I switch in Delete to try and take him down with some Shadow Punches, but the Baloofang was too strong and we went down. I then switch into Brackets to finish it off with a Crunch. He then switched in his Hone Raid, so I put it to sleep with Spore and set up a Toke, and then took it down with two Giga Drains. Next up is Polossus, which is a poison type, so I stayed in and went flamethrower. But sadly enough, it didn't take him out, so a gunk shot took down my Marlizard. I then went into Spurdo to try and take it down with a Sucker Punch, but it still wasn't enough, so it also got taken out by a gunk shot. So then I switched in brackets to take it down with an Aqua Jet. Hulken was next, so I switched into Scry to finish it off with a Lacto shot. Last up was Sonana, so I switched into Brackets, went for a Waterfall and an Aqua Jet, and then he took me out with a close combat, so my Sim the Man had to take him out with an Earth Power. After the battle, Lil Bro tells us that he's going to stop with Team Karma, and he's going to be searching for his brother. He also tells us that the boss is waiting for us on the top deck. So we travel up there with some more puzzles, and we finally meet the boss of Team Karma, and apparently Apparently it's Kimmy. She tells us that she's sorry for not meeting us on the cruise and that she wants to make it up to us, but first we have to leave because she's doing some important business. We don't leave and she eventually gets crazy and wants to fight us. And this battle itself is pretty hard but not the hardest yet, I did lose a few times because of some bad RNG luck. I start off with Spurdo and she starts off with Sadfish. I go for a player off but then we get taken out by a single Hydro Pump. I then decide to go into Smegma and finish it off with two Earth Powers. My Smegma then tries to learn Come and Go. Amazing move, it's a water type as well. Great. I decide to get rid of Meme and then just head on with the battle. Next up is Dolores who is a Psychic type so I go into my Delete to take it out with two Shadow Punches. Next up is the best evolution, Orion. So I go into my Octopus but we get one shot by a Lactose shot. I then decide to bring in Brackets to hit it with a Waterfall and an Aqua Jet to take it out. No Maestro is up next so I go for an Hydro Pump but it doesn't take it out and we get hit by a Hurricane. She then heals up and I take him out with a few more common goes. Never thought I'd say that in my life. Meme Nins is up next so I go into Delete, hit it with a Sky Uppercut but then we get taken out. 
I then go into brackets to finish it off with a waterfall and an aqua jet, and last up is the evolved form from No Goat, No Griunu, or something like that. I have no idea how to pronounce that word. So cannabis then puts it to sleep, and I go for a few tokes and a Giga Drain or two takes out the Knorigyoru to defeat Team Karma once and for all. After defeating her, she drops her lightsaber and then runs off. Definitely a lightsaber, don't even question it, guys. The last gym fight is against Darude, you know, the maker from Sandstorm. That's why this gym is full of sandstorms and if you enter a battle with him, Darude Sandstorm will start playing. For copyright reasons, I'll cut that out in this video though. He of course has to start off with a mother but luckily my Smegma is enough to take it out with a Hydro Pump and a few common goes. Next up is Galavire and he knows Giga Drain so my Smegma is doomed because he's watering ground type. So then Delete came out, I hit it with a Sky Uppercut but a Flesh Cannon was too much for me. Brackets then finished it off with a single Aqua Jet. Then Potarded came out, <laughs> you can't even make these names up. But he outspeeded and went for Power Whip to take me out in one single hit. I then went into Cannabis, put it to sleep, set up a Toke and took it out with a Giga Drain. The other form of Galavire then came out, Galaviste and he went down to a single flamethrower. Voltavour shares the same fate, and last up was Sombaluda who almost took me out with an earthquake but a flamethrower also one shot at it. We get our final gym badge and the TM for earthquake and we head to Professor Stump's lab. But first it's time for another wonder trade and this time we get a shitmon. Literally. Which we won't use, obviously. Professor Stum then congratulates us for getting all the 8 badges and says that he wants to take us on, so we go outside to battle him. And honestly, his team is one of the strongest in the entire game, so it's very obvious that this wasn't an easy fight. Even though that we were a little bit overleveled, we still couldn't take him out very easily, we lost about a dozen times until I eventually got the run that I needed. Also, that Smoga Robin that you see is my fly hate. HM slave, which I will get rid of for the final fight. I start off with Brackets and he starts off with Co Rooster. I start hitting it with Waterfalls and Aqua Jets, but eventually Brave Bird gets the better of me. For some reason, I then went into Delete, which wasn't the best idea, but the Brave Bird also took down the Co Rooster itself. Next up is a Palm Tree, so I go into Cannabis and set up some Tokes. I have to hit this thing with Giga Drains to get some HP back and eventually he does go down. Since we are in plus 6 with special attack and attack and speed. Davy Jaws then comes out and I also use Giga Drain on him to one shot it. One Knot also gets one shot because it's a poison steel type so a flamethrower easily takes care of him. Next up is Mana Tank who survives a Giga Drain but can't really hurt us so another Giga Drain finishes it off. And last up is Scyther, who I take down with a single flamethrower. The professor congratulates us and tells us that we should take on the Pokemon League, which is exactly what we're going to do. But first, in front of Victory Road, there is another poop, so we have to use the poop flute to take it out of here. We then have to find the three guardians of Victory Road. Eventually, we do find all of them after using strength on a lot of weird strength puzzles. And at the end of the cave, Kexandra is waiting waiting for us and she doesn't even know how she got here, she doesn't even have 8 badges but still she's at the end of Victory Road. It's Brackets versus Flowery and my waterfall barely does anything and then she switches into her elephant which has water absorbed so I have to switch out into Cannabis to put it to sleep with Spore and then use 3 tokes to maximize my special attack and speed. And I then proceed to sweep her entire team with Flamethrower and Giga Drain, a very easy battle with <laughs> Cannabis right here. As we try to leave the victory road, there is another mother guy who has a team of six mother who all use explosion and that can literally cost you the entire run if you're doing a nuzlocke. So if you're doing a nuzlocke, be prepared. And then we take on the first Elite Four member, Bendova. He starts off with Upchucken and I start off with my bracket, so I have to switch out immediately into Simdomen. I then switch back into brackets because it has intimidate and I know that this thing has a very high attacking stat so I'm just going to be switching out between brackets and other Pokemon to try and lower this thing's attack. Eventually my Sendomen and brackets are down. So I then go into Cannabis to put it to sleep with Spore and set up 3 tokes and then take it out with a Giga Drain while gaining some more health in the process. 
an electric sheep then comes out so I giga drain that as well to take it out in one single hit and get all of my HP back and then the rest of his team is an easy one shot with flamethrower and giga drain the next elite four member is Ginosaji a skeleton of some sorts he starts off with Unjoy, a pretty unsatisfying version of Nurse Joy, I guess. But luckily, we managed to take it out with three crunches from brackets. Next up is Spal Free, so I go into my Simdomen to take it out with two Earth Powers. Fantage then comes out, so I switch into my Octopus to try and take it out with a Serve, but he puts me to sleep and takes me down with two Giga Drains. So I then switch into Cannabis, set up two Tokes, and finish off three of his Pokemon, and then his last Pokemon comes out, which is Spookzilla, who took down my Cannabis. I then go into Delete and hit it with a Shadow Punch to try and take it out, but it wasn't enough, so we're down. So I then go into Spurdo, but he heals up, and I managed to hit it with a player of, but then we get taken out. I then go into Brackets to do some chip damage with Aqua Jet, but then we get taken out, and Simdomen is my last hope. We get hit with an Earthquake, and I thought we lost, but we hang on with a little bit of health remaining, and we take him out. Next up is the Dark-type Elite 4 member, Tyrone. He started off with Wreck Roach and I start off with Cannabis, I put it to sleep and set up 3 Tokes. I then go for a Giga Drain to get some health back and I then go for a Flamethrower to take him out after he healed up. Next up was an Issacin who I take down with a single Flamethrower. A Deathurus also gets one shot by a Flamethrower, Uato as well. Monstrap gets Giga Drained in the face, and Yadoom gets melted by a flamethrower to win ourselves the battle very easily. Now last up is the Crocodile Man Saxton Hill. And his team is pretty damn hard, and with his team I mean his last Pokemon, Farvigaton or something like that. And eventually I started a thing that I couldn't beat it, so I teached Fire Blast to my Cannabis. And then I tried again. Of course, I set up a Spore and three Tokes on his first Pokemon Galaviste and then proceed to take it out with a Flamethrower. Crocizon is up next, so I go for a Flamethrower to take it out as well. Kuroba also gets one shot, and without Fire Blast, I couldn't one shot Batter X, but this time I did. Then a Mapster came out, and I didn't have Giga Drain anymore, so I opted for Flamethrower and it didn't take it out, so I had to switch into Spurdo after my Cannabis got taken out. And then two players finished it off. Then Farvikton came out once again, which is the ace of his team, and he almost one-shot all of my Pokemon until Brackets came out and he lived with a sliver of health and then took him down with a single waterfall. On my way to the champion, I met up with Subnow once again. He said that the champion wrecked all of his Pokemon and that he has healed them up now and tries to stop us from winning this battle and then becoming champion, of course. So he decides to take us on here and now. Also, I had the DM for Giga Drain, so I reteached it. I used Sporo in his first Pokemon Uwato and of course started setting up Tokes once again. And I'm not even kidding when I say this, I then proceeded to one-shot his entire team. I told you guys that Marlizard is one of the most OP Pokemon in this game just because of that one move. And now it's finally time for the champion, him or herself. As we enter the room we see that it's actually just a normal house and we're pretty confused. But then it all comes together. It's our own mother that's the champion, oh my god. How cool is this? Let's beat her up. She starts off with a muzzle muzzle, so I start off with Smegma and set up a few Calm Mines. And then one shot it with a single Earth Power. Next up is her own Marlizard, oh my god, no please. And I try to one shot it with Hydro Pump, but it isn't enough and a Giga Drain takes us out. I then go into my own Marlizard, hit it with a Flamethrower, but it isn't enough. And then she switches in her legendary Pokemon, Badon. So I switch into Brackets and she sets up a few Dragon Dances while I hit it with a Crunch and a Drill Peck. Sadly enough, I barely did any damage and then my Brackets went down to a single Earthquake. I then tried my entire team until I was only left with Cannabis, and yes, they all got one-shotted. So I went into Cannabis, my last hope, and put it to sleep with Spore because she went for another Dragon Dance. I then proceeded to set up three Togues without it waking up, and the Flamethrower finished it off. Then a level 99 Mazdaw came out who literally couldn't even touch me, even though it survived the Flamethrower. Her wife Ming got one shot by a flamethrower, her Marlizard got taken out by a flamethrower, and last up was Semdomen, who didn't take a Giga Drain very well. And after defeating our mom, we're the champion of Pokemon Clover.
Honestly, this is my favorite ROM hack yet, not because of the controversy that the game brings with it, but because of the amazing Fakemon that he has made. Marley's art is 100% one of my favorite Pokemon and Fakemon, and I wish Game Freak would hire the people that made this game. But what did you guys think? Did you guys think that it was a little bit too offensive? Did you think that it was good? Let me know in the comments down below. And let me know how your playthrough of this game is going if you're going to check it out. And now I just want to thank my Patreon sponsors from Marshtomp and above, Mickey Googla, A Little Turtle, and Felipe Morla. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. And that was it for this video, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe and share this video with your friends. I'm Zwigo and I'll see you guys next time.